we would play Halo like 4v5, whatever it could take. And <laughs> we would just demolish these kids down the hall. And I just remember after finishing, I was like, I don't have to like teabag them. I can just run down the hall and show my ass <laughs> and then run back <laughs> and start the next round. Jamon, yeah, Jamon. I hope you like Jamon too. Welcome, one and all, to Jamon Cast. This is a podcast dedicated to celebrating video games and delivering video game news and interviews. I adore video games and love sharing that with you every week. So if you stick around, I think you'll have a good time. This week we have What's News, where I go over the video game news for the week. My interview today is with a man who I've known for many years, but I've got to learn quite a bit more about him by sitting down and talking about games. He plays World of Warcraft, he sings on Twitch Sings, and many other games. But most importantly, he's a good friend of mine. I'm happy to have him on today's podcast. You can meet him today in, in the interview by the name Ace. Before we get started, I want to inform you of a few ways you can elevate your experience. I have a phone number you can call if you feel like joining in the conversation. The number you can call to leave a message is 949-407-9198. That's 949-407-9198. Also, you can follow me on Twitter, at Jamin the Shaman. You'll know more about what I'm up to and how you can be involved. I'm also on Twitch, at twitch.tv slash Jamin. Let's get this podcast started. What's news, everyone? We got some great news this week. Almost entirely, actually entirely, about Blizzard Entertainment and classic World of Warcraft. Those are the two topics, really. Lots of things to talk about, but a lot of strange things to talk about, okay? So, the first thing I want to talk about is on October 3rd, Blizzard Community Manager Kyvax made an update on the official classic forums titled Realm Layering Update. In the statement, Kyvax reaffirmed Blizzard's stance for classic World of Warcraft that they will have all realms on a single layer before introducing world bosses, and a great deal of progress has been made toward that goal. They've been able to accommodate more players per layer, which means fewer layers required per realm. The last time a server in the North American region had more than three layers was the first week of September and almost all realms reached two layers shortly after that. This includes high population realms such as Feralina, which is at only two layers for three weeks now. Some select realms reach their end state of a single layer, and they lock that in. With a change made earlier this week, the following World of Warcraft classic realms are now permanently set to one layer. Anathema, Arcanite Reaper, Ashkandi, Azur Song, Deviant Delight, Earth Fury, Fell Striker, Heart Seeker, Netherwind, Old Blanche, Remulos, Smolderweb, Wind Seeker. All those 13 realms are now on one single layer. Soon, realms that are operating with more than one layer will indicate that on the realm selection screen. Those realms will say layered in the realm list. Thereafter, you'll only see the full, high, medium, and low markers for realms that are permanently set to one layer. They plan to move more realms to a single layer over time, and they will continue to offer free character moves to balance populations and manage login queues. So big takeaway from this is that layers are only three layers or less on all servers. We're in the end game now. I've already seen this taking effect on Scarum. I don't know how to close to one layer Scarum is, but it's awesome noticing that the auction house prices start to rise on gathering materials. It's not even people exploiting causing materials to be cheap, which is what people were saying before. Just imagine having double or triple the supply on the same auction house. Same number of players, but you have way more supply than demand, way more gathering nodes than the demand. Now, with the supply dropping, we're seeing prices go up. It's really awesome, and I look forward to layers being totally abolished. Another thing I'm wondering with this announcement is that maybe they'll bring layers back if they decide to launch new, untouched realms later in the classic cycle. To put all this effort into creating a new user interface and make sure people know which realms are layered, it, it could be really helpful to have that when new realms are launched and everyone is creating new characters on fresh servers. 
The next thing I want to talk about, moving on, is the new developer content preview. Game director Ian Hazacosta started in a video on October 7th for the World of Warcraft YouTube channel. He's explaining what's coming for World of Warcraft in the near future. On the retail side of World of Warcraft, there's going to be new allied races. The Mechanomes for the Alliance and the Volpera for the Horde. The Mechanomes and the Volpera look beautiful. Uh, the Mechanomes, I'm not excited about them. First off, they're an alliance race, so again, I'm going to be a little bit less on them. But they kind of look like the same thing like the High Mountain Tarin did for Tarin. Like, I'm not all that excited about High Mountain Tarin. All they have is little horns. The Mechanomes are just gnomes, but they have little mechanical stuff on them. The Volpera are just a reskin of goblins, though, right? Aren't they a reskin of goblins? I'm pretty sure. So... Can't be all that excited about them either, but they look good. These are cool. They have a lot of cool. They have new dance emotes. They have new heritage armor for goblins and worgen coming. And then you have all the new mounts. You have the the all the 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 voice lines and the jokes and the, the flirts and the dances. So those are all really cool to see. Always great to see new stuff added. The auction house is getting a revamp which is including favoriting items and making shopping lists. And there's no more single stacks. They got rid of that. They found a way to make it to the auction house. You can't just list things one at a time. Nihilotha is a 12-boss raid with Nizoth as the final boss that's coming out. There's going to be new horrific visions. There are new challenges inspired by the Mage Tower and Legion designed for 1-5 to five players to clear alternate versions of Orgrimmar and Stormwind. Rathian will help you and you'll power up a legendary cloak to improve your defenses against the old gods. This cloak will also come in handy when you fight Nazoth. That reminds me of the cloak to fight Nefarian. If you get the cloak off Anixia, you can fight, fight Nefarian and, and negate one of his abilities. Assaults by Nazoth's minions on Titan facilities will be another thing added in the patch. Uldum and Veil of Eternal Blossoms. The Veil is finally being cleansed and restored to its original Mist of Pandaria's appearance. When an assault takes place, the entire zone is affected and special treasures and content are available. With all the assaults on Titan facilities, the Titan Forge system may be replaced by something new, which I think hopefully a lot of people enjoy. The Titan Forging is one real big problem with it. For a lot of people in the end game content, Titan Forging is really stupid. For people that are not in the endgame content, it's it's fine. It's whatever it is. It's good. It's cool to see something Titanforge. But once you get to endgame, it stinks knowing that you need a 0.00000001% chance to get the thing you want. And it has to Titanforge and all that, right? That's really terrible. There will be more levels for the Heart of Azeroth, new essence slots, and more essences coming from 8.3 content. And there's a new Mythic Plus affix to re reflect Nazoth Corrupted. There are black empire obelisks that pull you into an alternate reality and then port you out to your location reached in the alternate reality versus your original location making for some interesting skips the other thing they talked about in this was classic world of warcraft which is again what i'm more excited about dire maul will arrive on the week of october 15th ahead of the rest of phase two which is ahead of schedule dire maul was not supposed to come out on its own ahead of phase two but it is Lots of people on Twitter and Reddit were upset with this announcement, saying that Blizzard is rushing things in order to keep people playing. I don't think Blizzard should wait for everyone to actually be 60 and to get their best-in-slot pre-raid gear before launching Dire Maul. No matter when you launch it, there are going to be people that hadn't accomplished everything they could have prior to its launch. I think launching it now is a little quick, but in the end, it's not a big deal. This is going to have a lot of ramifications with classic servers. On the high-population servers... World farming of mats is high competition. Rich Thorium Banes are pounced on whenever they spawn. Dire Maul brings with it instance gathering nodes. It allows people to gather uncontested mineral and herbalism nodes. I'm still learning every day here, and I just watched Tips Out's newest video. As a person who never played on a private server, as a person who never got to experience that, or experience Classic originally, the things that are coming uh, are sometimes kind of unknown to me. Dire Maul. I watched Tips Out's newest video on this. Dire Maul is going to be a huge inflation to the gold economy that I didn't even have a clue about till recently. So Dire Maul East jump runs, according to Tips Out, well, could you net you up to 60 gold an hour as a warrior and a, and a, and a healer. If you do Lasher runs, you can get like 70 to 80 gold an hour. Dire Maul North, if you can solo the tribute, you can get like 120 gold plus an hour as a, as a hunter. 
These are huge numbers, okay? This is just getting items and vendoring them and getting them and vendoring them, okay? There's doesn't no other person involved. Of course, you're going to get like, you know, uh, mineral nodes and herbal nodes and you can you can then sell those to other people. But this is the gold of the game inflating in value, okay? So if you have gold today, it will be worth less tomorrow tomorrow being the day that Nyarmal comes out, than it is today, okay? So any gold you have right now is worth more than it ever will be again in the game because Nyarmal is coming, and it's coming very soon. Uh, by the time you're hearing this, it's probably already out, but the 15th, a week of the 15th, which is this coming week when this podcast is being recorded, it's coming, man. Nyarmal, here we go. Big economy changes for the World of Warcraft Classic. And finally, I want to move on to the largest news section for this week. Blizzard issued a 12-month ban on a professional Hearthstone player. And I can't, I can't say your name. It's NGY Blitzchung Chung for vocalizing his support of Hong Kong's liberation movement. This has led to a hashtag boycott Blizzard to be trending on Twitter. The New York Times reported Activision Blizzard's quarter two 2019 financial results. The Asia-Pacific market, which includes other countries in the area like Japan, was 12% or $173 million U.S. dollars of its revenue. Okay, 12% of its revenue, $173 million made in the Asia-Pacific market. But Blizzard and a lot of other companies are expecting large growth in China next year. Games like Diablo Immortal are targeting China and their large mobile gaming market. It's a huge market. People in China play mobile games more than other games. Diablo Immortal is being co-developed with a Chinese company, NetEase. So on October 6th, Chung won a Hearthstone Grandmasters match and he was interviewed on stream for a post-match interview. He yelled, Liberate Hong Kong, Revolution of Our Age while wearing a gas mask referencing the anti-mask law recently put into effect by China. Chung told Inven Global, My call on stream was just another form of participation of the protest that I wish to grab more attention. It could cause me a lot of trouble, even my personal safety in real life. But I think it's my duty to say something about the issue. So Blizzard posted an official statement. Effective immediately, Blizz Chung is removed from Grandmasters and will receive no prizes for Grandmasters Season 2. Additionally, he is ineligible to participate in Hearthstone Esports for 12 months, beginning from October 5th, 2019, and extending to October 5th, 2020. We will also immediately cease working with both casters. So both casters that were on the desk during the interview are being fired as well. They were seen ducking behind their desk, and then they came out and tried to play it off. They started clapping for him. Uh, but all three of them were terminated, basically, from being able to participate in Hearthstone esports anymore. Brian Kibler, who casts for Hearthstone, announced on October 9th that he will no longer be involved in the digital card game's Grandmaster competition. And I agree with a lot of the points he made in his statement on his website, bmkgaming.com. You can go there to check it out. It's a really good read. If you want to understand from someone who's in the scene exactly what's going on and how it affected him and his opinions. So for me, a punishment from Blizzard makes sense. Blizzard made the right choice punishing him for pushing a political agenda on their stream. The punishment they doled out, however, is completely overboard. They seem to be trying to appease the Chinese government so that they don't get banned out of China. They have too much financial stake in China going forward to risk losing it. So they came down hard on him. They not only made an example of him, they obliterated him relative to the crime. It's a little bit gross that Blizzard would do that. I think they were well within their rights to punish him. But the severity of the punishment is a little nuts. In regards to the boycotting, I see it as a good move for most people. For me, I feel like I have a tiny financial stake in playing Blizzard games. Okay, it's, it's, it's relatively small. I really enjoy them. And they've helped me meet people and communicate with others who I never would have met in the first place. I'm not at a place yet where I think I can boycott. I think they made a lot of poor decisions over the last year. 
but I'm not sure my grievances currently outweigh the people I've met and the connections I've created from playing their games yet. The people are honestly uh, a fantastic portion of the game that I love. The game itself brings me. It's a great game. But then you create these moments and these connections with people around you that really solidify the power of video games. So now I want to move on, guys. I have an interview this week with a good friend of mine. He goes by the name Ace. He is a World of Warcraft priest player leveling up currently. He sings on Twitch Sings if you're into that. But he's a friend of mine. That's really uh, where it comes down to it. And I hope you guys enjoy this interview. Ace, here you go. Here's the interview. Hello, listeners. Welcome to another interview on JamanCast. I'm joined today by a man who plays World of Warcraft. He sings on Twitch Sings, and he's a good friend of mine. I've known him for years, and I'm happy to have him on today. His name is Ace. How's it going, man? What's going on? Check, check, check. Can you hear me? Yep. Ma! The computer's not working again! I don't care about your romance novel! No, I cannot pause it! Check, hello? Hello? Hey, Ace. What's up, man? Hey, hey, there he is. There he is. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> good, good. What good, good, good. Good to hear from you. Yeah. How's your mom? She's okay. She's doing good. Thank you for asking. She she said it. She appreciates that. I thank yeah, you. You're welcome. Yeah, of course. 100%. Uh, so, let's start off with the first question. The first one I ask everybody. And the first thing that it's always important, that feels like it's the cornerstone of our video gaming lives. What's the first game that you ever played that left an impression on you? So, I have listened to some of your podcasts and I've a couple, yeah. thought about it. And uh, it's it's the Poke Man, the Poke Man. Yeah, yeah, that's infuriating. Ma calls it Poke Man. It's it's Pokemon. I keep trying to tell her, but she won't listen. <laughs> which uh, which which version? Did you blue red? Ooh, you got a fifty fifty chance to go. I'm gonna say red. You're a red man. And that's all we have today, folks. I hope you we catch you on the next Jamin cast. What's that? <laughs> Jamin. <laughs> Blue. blue blue it was blue mine was Blastoise, blue. baby see i played blue so i just assumed that everybody else played red i don't know why well you just said you started it with we're good friends so yeah you're right i should have just known you we, think you know a guy i think you, think you know a guy. <laughs> you think we'd be synced <laughs> yeah i thought we were synced what uh when did you get we it? are synced now when, when did you get it blue yeah when um <laughs> well i know that game freak was 96 because it always pop up i played it on the game boy um you remember what was going you. on in your life at the time? Yeah, I was a kid. I remember the house. Parents were divorced at the time, which was they divorced early. Mm-hmm. Uh, I re- I just remember that game kind of like being consume like consuming me. You know, like I would draw Pokemon on these big sketch pads, and I loved it. It was cool. I never really got. I kind of got into the trading card. But not really. It was just mm-hmm. all the game for me. So the Pokemon was kind of new. I did play games before that. Like I had the Super Nintendo. Um, I think Def Camp. Maybe it was Def Camp. Man, uh, mentioned Paperboy. Do you remember which one? That was um, uh, Cavi plays. Cavi. That's right. Yeah. God, Paperboy was infuriating. Yeah. He played it on his. He was like he a rail. Played it on his Game Boy. He said. Not yeah, I played it on the Nintendo with the old boob tube. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was an infuriating uh, game. You just you just pedaled. It was like a rail shooter, but it was paper and like if you you tried to hit it in the uh, mailbox, right? But if mm-hmm. you threw it late or early, you could land in the bushes. You could break windows. Yeah, and you could terrible. you could like angle your throws, but it was like a weird framed like uh, it wasn't a side scroller. It was like an isometric point of view, and you could it was really weird. That was a really weird game. Yeah. Also played Gunsmoke. I loved Gunsmoke. That was so Paperboy goes from left to right. Gunsmoke mm-hmm. went from bottom to top like that, like a classic shooter. That was a lot of fun. Boy, was that game hard too. There's not many harder games than you get than just like classic platformers or rails. Yeah, the I remember the 
the plane shooters, so whatever, like the ones where you would just sit in a like I think it was uh, 1942 or yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Those were always amazing. Oh yeah, that's right. What was it called? 1984. 1984. Is that what it was? With the with yeah, the... I think it sounds familiar. I know yeah. they had a couple of different re- iterations of it. And then there was the ones with like the it's like robot. Galagos, I guess the yeah. original. There was like robot mecha planes, and you could like play with your friend. I remember form into two planes. I don't remember which one that was. I have fond memories of so my parents lived on five acres. I guess it was my mom, my stepdad. They lived on five acres, and next to us were my grandparents. They lived on, like, five acres. So I'd walk over there. For some reason, my grandparents had Cartoon Network. So I'd go over there, watch DBZ, <laughs> make my granddad watch DBZ with me. <laughs> he wouldn't move off the couch. He would just watch TV. A bunch of old westerns. I'd come over there and we'd watch DBZ. Um, they also had, at the time, uh, their son was living with them. So my uncle, he was kind of, like, transitioning or whatever, and he had a Sega Genesis, so... The Sega Genesis, I guess I had I played a lot of darker games like Mortal Kombat. I remember beating Mortal Kombat maybe three or something like for the first time. Like he couldn't beat it. But like Shao Kahn, I could only do it with uh, Sub Zero. Shao Kahn would just like charge you and two hit you, and you're like crap. So the only thing I could think of was to freeze, <laughs> roll the keyboard forward, jump kick, roll or not the keyboard but the directional pad, roll the keyboard back. And then do like this Hadouken to freeze him again. Yeah. Roll up and over, jump kick, roll back, Hadouken. I like, was a young kid. I started. Yeah. After, I don't know. And you have exploded, to, I mean, exploded, but. not really like a strategy guide or anything, or like, I guess not a ton of people no. you can talk to about it. It wasn't like a social thing. It was just like, this is something I'm going to do. Yeah, just me. Yeah. Uh, did There's you? Also like, go ahead. I was just going to ask you, do you have, did it ever become a social thing? Did video games become a social thing for you, or is that later in life? Or pretty much when i got to college with you guys i was in the uh overflow room i was in a study room and they just threw two bunk beds in there so there's four of us in the commons area and as soon as i had the chance to uh bunk up with navid i kind of just took it i don't know what made me do that but i was like hey yes i love these things too and i just i don't know if he ever said yes to me <laughs> going into his room but it happened i intruded up and probably the best thing that could have happened yeah the class the the time for that for uh for me too uh the people we met there is just it's crazy that that one year uh the things the people the connections that that were made same i mean we were in this dorm that was how many stories was it four or five something like that yeah yeah we were on the third floor i think I can't even remember. It's been yeah, so long. I can't remember either. I mean, it wasn't forgettable, but it I wasn't the second it. floor, but it wasn't the top floor. Yeah, I think it was third. I think we we're. You see, third or fourth. It yeah, was third or fourth. Something like that. But we were all there. Mm-hmm. That's wild. Yeah, I remember baking cookies on cardboard baking sheets. I remember. <laughs> I have a good. So the hallway, believe it or not, was land. The whole entire hallway was on land. Was it? Yeah. We so. Should. We had Xboxes. There was a group oh, of right, kids right. down the hall, right, that had an Xbox, and Halo was big at the time. So was Guitar Hero. Oh man, Guitar mm-hmm. Hero. I don't do. I don't play mini games. Like I don't. I do play games, but I don't play mini games. If I play a game, I go kind of hard on it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. So I was big in Guitar Hero, but okay, go back to the Xbox. We would play Halo like four, four, five, v five, whatever it could take, and. <laughs> we would just demolish these kids down the hall. And I just remember after finishing, I was like, I don't have to like teabag them. I can just run down the hall and show my ass <laughs> and then run back <laughs> and start the next round. So that's what I would do. And they were like, I remember talking to them. They're like, dude, I hated you so much. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that was probably a dick move. Yeah. But it was funny. Made for some good stories. Yeah. hundred percent, man. Yeah. The, I didn't realize it was land. I think I knew it was land, but it was like I never thought about like how to take advantage of it. But like Unreal Tournament, um, I used to play the Unreal Tournament 1999 edition. This like crappy little game uh, by then because it was like Is that two, like the Quake Engine. Yeah, it was like 2000. Two, it was 1999 Game of the Year edition or something that I used to have on a USB drive. And uh, senior year of my high school, we would take it. And we'd bring it to the the entire school was land up. So if you were on one end of the school and you were on a computer, 
you could network with someone on the other end of the school if they were on a computer. So that's how land works. Yeah. But you didn't have to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you didn't have to install the game because it was so small. You could play it on a US, oh, okay. you could play it off a USB drive. So you didn't have to like mess with the game, the, the system on the computer. You didn't have to mess with the anything. Oh, right. Okay. So you could do it on so like, we, social we public would, computers. Yeah. We would just plug it into the, uh, to the computer in wherever we were, as long as no teachers were around and we could just start playing and like <laughs> literally oh, that's... my entire senior year. I don't remember how many times. It was literally just like, oh, I have to go to the I have to go to the computer lab. Okay, bye. Is high school? Yeah, high school. Yeah. Yeah, that's next level. Yeah. Uh, college. And then we uh, we would just play Unreal Tournament. College. Like we would play Unreal Tournament like every period. We'd be like, hey, who was playing last night? Who was playing yesterday? Or you know, last period. Get to lunch and you talk about everybody. Everybody come together talking about who was killing who and what was going on and like the whole like whole, it was just amazing. Like the whole like experience of of switching from like just being in school and having to do school stuff, which was boring. And did like, it feel naughty? Or you, oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> felt great. You little bad boy. Yeah. But, uh, uh yeah. Was Dota cool. was another one. The Dota on Warcraft mm-hmm. was another big one in college that I got. I like, I was like, Oh boy. Yeah. I'm like really getting into it. The social aspect of it, of, of Dota. Yeah. That too. That one, uh, I just remember getting screamed at by people and being like, I yeah, that was me. I don't like this. Game. No, not you. No, it wasn't <laughs> that you. was me. No, it was, uh, <laughs> I would uh, do a lot of screaming. What's his name? I, I get I so remember. like, I don't know how to communicate with people that are close to me other than just screaming at them. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what the yeah, no, it's terrible. It, that's yeah. It's terrible. I think that's a uh, important lesson also to notice for like online games when you're interacting with people that are just screaming at you. They don't know a better way to interact. <laughs> that's, yeah, I think that's a good yeah. a good mindset to have. That people are like, oh, this guy's toxic. And you can de- they're actually pretty easy to diffuse as well. Like you can diffuse them pretty well, but it's when people, are, I don't know, like return the toxicity. And then yeah, you call it, yeah, yeah, and then it just feeds. But if they're pretty easy to diffuse, you're like, oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks. And maybe, maybe I'll talk to you normally next time, or maybe I'll scream. <laughs> <you again. laughs> We're going to work on it. Do you have a, so I want to talk to you about guitar here. Cause I remember when you came into, uh, the, the dorm, you were like the guitar hero. I just remember you being like the guitar. That guy's really good yeah. guitar. Hero. So and I from, was in, uh, yeah. So I was in Mar. I did band throughout high school. I was a band geek. I played the trumpet, uh, middle school, when I got to high school, I would do symphonic, which is everyone sits in a, you know, it's very orchestral. Mm-hmm. It's not orchestral. Actually, orchest- orchestral or orchestra is strings, and symphony is brass trivia. Didn't think you guys would learn anything today, did you? Yeah, that's not even gaming related. Holy cow. Yeah. Big brains. <laughs> it's big brain, big brain, multi brain. Yeah. Uh, so I was in symphonic, and then also, because we didn't have strings. So we, I was in symphonic and also marching band. And then about, like the third year of my high school, they were like, the band teacher was like, I can start a jazz band. We're going to do it mm-hmm. like early before school starts. So I was like before school starts to after school ends kind of work day for me, just completely encompass. But okay. So the, the band kids like guitar hero and I always show up on guitar hero. I remember being in like the cafeteria. You ever been in the cafeteria in high school when all the, uh, seats and tables are pushed like lifted up and pushed to the side yeah it okay. gets pretty big i was like 30 yards out playing guitar hero and people are like who's playing that how does he know what to play wait and how, just kinda, you, at lunch I playing it. you were able to play it at lunch no no it wasn't at lunch it was just kind of like a band had a bunch of after school activities a bunch just kind of some downtime especially okay. when you're like traveling or in between periods stuff like that band is Okay. Okay. If you, if you ever took band out there, then you you you'd know. Yeah, I it's just a lot of time spent. It's funny you mentioned the jazz band because uh, my my school did the exact same thing, and I joined jazz band. My teacher was like, "I could have a jazz band," and I did it my sophomore year of high school, I think. And then what like, did you play? Uh, baritone saxophone. That was a monster. It was like it was like carrying a a, a body around with me everywhere I went. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit big. Yeah. yeah, it's bigger than the alto. So yeah. it's it's. So there's alto for the guy, for the non band geeks. There's alto, and then it goes to tenor, and then it goes to baritone. Yeah, the baritone yeah. plays with the with the with yeah, the, the tuba with the tubas. Me and the tubas would be uh, yeah. synchronizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, we had one. I think. Yep, we had one. I hated it. Honk, I, I got just honk. Yeah, honk, I got honk, I got to, honk, I got talked into it by my uh, my by my uh, 
instructor. He was like, we need a baritone sax player. And I was like, okay, well, I, I play tenor, so we can switch to baritone. Well, we kind of need a resto shaman. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> See, oh. see, I've been scarred. I've been scarred by my, my, <laughs> my baritone sax days. I can't just listen to whatever people tell me to do. I, I have to realize I don't, I don't need that giant body to carry around with me, okay? If I go resto, I'm, I'm going to have to carry a body. I'll be carrying bodies around with me. My, my shoulders are getting heavy. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that was uh, interesting. And then Guitar Hero, like, every day after school in high school, we'd go over to my friend's house. We'd play Guitar Hero. I was the worst one, but it was it was great. Yeah, I was just naturally good at Guitar Hero and we'd go to college, and I was able to play more Guitar Hero. Mm -hmm. And I, and this was, like, Guitar Hero 3, I think? Yeah, I think it was Guitar Hero 3. I think it was 3. I didn't play it after 3. Because through, uh, through the Fire and the Flames was, like, the song. Through the Fire and Flames. I was the first person I knew to ever do that and yeah. it's still i mean I, we have a good friend named Otto. he did it but he actually became <laughs> we both got good at different times but uh i didn't know that yeah i, I didn't realize that Otto beat through the fire and the flames like i remember uh, you, that I was beat your thing the fire and flames yeah. on Otto's system i didn't have it oh wow yeah i didn't have it i don't know why i didn't have it i think uh i don't know i think i i don't think i ever owned that game i didn't <laughs> ever own that game <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got really good at it. And then for anyone oh. in the stream, if you want to know who Otto is, you just got you just got to type his name. You just tape his oh, name in the right. chat. His name. You can see Let's him. See those? This is John Minato's. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Bless that man. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, do you have a favorite game of all time? Do you have like a, a video game that you think of as your favorite game of all time? Give me a sec. Hmm. Hmm. All time. I remember uh, there's another good memory of us playing Gears of War 2 in the suites, I think. We we would like, go out to the common room. Me and David would like duo, something like that. Favorite game of all time. I was playing Hearthstone for a lot, for a bit. Uh, I kind of stopped when Classic came out. Um, yeah, Hearthstone. You got a, you're got you actually a mobile gamer. I'm kinda, yeah, I played Diablo 2. I'm a yeah. bit of a Blizzard baby. Blizzard baby? Okay. Diablo two. I actually never played. I never played Diablo two. Oh, a Blizzard, oh, man. A Blizzard oh, baby. Diablo Maybe two. Okay, so Diablo <laughs> two. I there. I was in the country, out in the country, and one of my adopted aunts or whatever was playing it on her laptop, and I was. She was playing Diablo one when you could only be like rogue, warrior, and sorcerer. I think or something. Maybe. Yeah, there's something. I was like, I think there was four classes, maybe, maybe three. No, there was three. There was three. There was okay. Three. Yeah. And I was like, what is this? And I remember playing Diablo two, and Diablo two, Lord of it, Destruction. I was the shapeshifter. The druid. The them? druid. The druid. I think. Druid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Druid. Man, I was so bad at that game, but you know, just being home alone playing that just it just soaked my time into it also i was really i've always been decently good at fps's uh nothing like league or professional but i mm -hmm. played socom 2 u.s navy seals oh my and, god uh, dude that game was so good two. do you remember that game yeah i remember playing it because oh. my, my father's in the military so we would get that game we yeah. get every military game we would be like yes get that game dude i let me tell you socom 2 u.s navy seals mm -hmm. i played the absolute dog out of i got like you could so the there was like ranks or whatever first it was like the butter stick and then there was chopsticks it, you know the bar and then you got two silver bars which i think was like lieutenant or i don't know oh I yeah yeah, yeah. Huh. captain it's okay. well i mean i know the i know the ranks the the, marine the captain corps. was the cookie the captain yeah. was a cookie because it looked like a star kind of it was like yeah that. that's the so this is the marine corps ranks in my head the captain so captains is yeah they're i'm sorry they're eagles and then um to beat, I got my wings, and this was a game that you could exploit, like just cheat, lag switches, anything that you can think of, you could cheat your way to the top. But I legit had my wings for like four hours, and it was one of the greatest <laughs> gaming memories of my life. I had my wing, I got my wings, which is like top four percent or something. I don't, I can't remember top five. I guess it makes more sense. But I got my wings for like four hours, legitimately, like just putting in the hours. I couldn't have been more proud. That third-person shooter game was so fun. Mm -hmm. I remember being an incredible game. Um, 
I don't remember there was a mul- I didn't realize there was a multiplayer online like uh, uh, oh yeah I had, I had side. Ethernet cables all across the house at my parents' house. <laughs> I had them running like just over top the carpet, just to get me the stapling it to the wall. It was it was awesome. So now I want to ask you. So you're playing World of Warcraft with me. We're playing in the same classic. Let's go there, baby. Yeah, we're World playing World of Warcraft. We're playing classic right now. Own like intro. <laughs> it's like it's like, hey, we're done talking about video games. Now we're just gonna talk about World of Warcraft. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it needs its own section. Uh, did you ever play retail World of Warcraft before Classic? I did. Mm-hmm. Um, back in college, I had another roommate. His name was John. He was a lot of fun. He played uh, Paladin. You could be wait. You could be Paladin Horde retail, right? Yeah. Yeah, because that was... Um, blood Elf, that's right, Blood yeah, Elf. He yeah. was a Blood Elf male. Yeah. And I ran priest with him. I had a goblin priest, and his name... I deleted him. Rest in peace. Let's all take a moment of silence. <laughs> his name was Malgit, and it was perfect. So the goblins are Gits, G-I-T. And I, I love Spanish, so I would do Mal, which is bad. Like Mal. But it had two A's. So I had that get in it. It was perfect. Malgit. He, I raided in Cataclysm. So I started in Cataclysm. Cataclysm. Okay, that's like exactly. Basically, I guess I, I stopped playing when you started. Say again? I guess I stopped playing when you started. Must have been. Around that time. Must have been. I remember a lot of yoo in your days. Yeah, a lot of yoo A lot of yoo-hoos. A lot of nose, <laughs> nosebleeds from uh, being malnourished. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, boy. You don't remember that? I wish I was a better friend. You know, no one knows how to being a friend is dip, can be difficult yeah. sometimes. Naveen remembers it. Uh so I and I'll say it on stream here because I and honestly guys, this is this is a lesson for everybody, okay? This is not a video game lesson, this is a life lesson. Eat food, okay? Eat food with actual calories in it. Um I would just I never like we had a, a food card. We could go down to the the cafeteria or whatever it was called and, and swipe the card and get free meals, like one meal a day, I think. And uh, that was too much work for me. I was too like, Ugh, I don't want to leave my dorm room. I don't want to stop playing video games. I don't want to stop interacting and socializing with people. Um, it was an easy walk as well. Nice and beautiful. Yeah, I should have. You're, I mean, looking back on it, it's insane that I didn't. But um, Yeah, you're like, wow, what a freaking dummy. Yeah, but. what a dumb young kid. But uh, I would. my diet consisted of ramen and yoo-hoo. Uh, and ramen and yoo-hoo. And it was instant ramen. It was just like the... The worst, like ten cent ramen, literally, is like all you're getting is calories and zero. Like it's 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 salt and MSG. And Did you get it from noodle. the C store? Yeah, because it was that was right. Okay, so we had this place called the C store, which yeah. C Con- for convenience, yeah. but we were the Seahawks, so it was the. It was oh the right, C store. oh right, that's right. Um, yeah, it was right Obviously behind. Sure it was it was literally Wagner, yeah it was it was literally right behind our our building. So I would just go there and buy and i was like i got a i got a hot shot thing that pours water and makes it hot and then i get instant ramen without even thinking about it it's totally fine it's like, a percolator you had a percolator yeah yeah i had, Ooh, a, had a little red a I had a, okay this is another <laughs> another i had a little red bowl a little red ceramic bowl that i had under there that you could put soup in or whatever and this is how young i was and how uh unknown the world was to me at the time naive uh, yeah naive i had a uh a guy one of the our uh I think it was um, Rob's old roommate, and for people who don't know, Rob is one of our our friends. He came into Another my college buddy. he came into my my room, my dorm room, and said, "Hey, dude, you got a bowl?" <clears throat> and I gave him my ceramic I gave him my ceramic bowl, uh, my little How red kind of you. my That's little so kind of you. my little red bowl uh, was for it dirty. No, it was clean. I cleaned it. It was, yeah. but yeah, he he got to take that back with him to wherever he was to do whatever he wanted to do with that thing. Uh, I don't know if he even told me like that I was wrong or that he didn't need it. He just took it and then returned it later. Uh, oh, he actually returned it because that's not his nature. Yeah, he returned it. Yeah, the, uh, holy crap. Yeah, that <laughs> I don't know if he can. Are we just gonna keep going off on on college story <laughs> tangents? No, no, no. You you did that. Yeah, you're right. I did that too. But it's yeah. a good it's a good time. Mm-hmm. So classic. Wow, we were talking about that. Um, so yeah, you played retail. So you played Git, wow. GitHub. GitHub. What the hell is that? What no Malgit. Malgit, where'd the... GitHub is like a music picture site? Something? <laughs> Beyond oh, me, bro. Anyway, okay. Malgit. Malgit. Malgit, yeah. He was... Uh, I remember raiding and 
people then like people conferring and like all right malga gets the piece and i was like oh <gasps> but you know i was like oh i was disciplined i i, I never dabbled in i did dabble slightly and holy but discipline was just a lot of fun i like the fact that you not taking damage was way cooler than me healing you mm -hmm. yeah i think but discipline I it depended on the power did, they, did they have penance then yeah yeah penance was penance a cool spell was so cool mm -hmm. i that was one of my favorite spells actually was that discipline That's yeah the that reason i went discipline yeah to hold penance shoom, shoom, shoom. yeah oh it was like mm, get it the healing energy <laughs> So you never played before uh, Cataclysm? Uh, That's correct. Okay. Never, so, never went, dabbled in vanilla or BC or... So you missed this whole I was around world. It. Yeah, I was around it kind of, but uh, not even a spectator, just a whispers on the wind, you know? Gotcha. Oh, Jesus, wow. Classic. Yeah. And now that it's released, I'm... You know, I'm going a little faster, but I'm having a ton of fun with it. Yeah, how's um, how's it been? How's the classic WoW? You said it's been fun. Uh, you're playing a priest again, but you're shadow this time, no? Because discipline doesn't have that uh that penance ability. That's true, and uh, you know, it's, you you uh pretty much got me into classic. You're all your casts were like massive hype, and I was like, oh man, I'm kind of feeling it too. And <laughs> if he probably won't say it, but he you know he was gonna play it too. So I was like, I'm I want to play classic and. It's completely replaced everything else. A couple of gamers have said that, but it it does. Yeah. I'll say that uh, from like level 52 to 60, I'm kind of not liking. But the like beginning, like maybe I should just create an alt and start again. But I'm having a lot of fun with classic and being a priest. You're like sought after. People greet you when you come in. Hey, hey, hey and you're like. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, every time you're on, I'm like, oh, he's on, he's on, he's on, he's on. We he's can do. On. We got a healer. And I'm yeah. like, here we go, baby. Let's <laughs> yeah. go. Yeah, I am. I I am like prematurely invited to a lot of dungeons and raids because I don't need hit. I just need to heal my players, which mm -hmm. is nice, and that's nice touch. But I, I'm having a like a lot of fun. I am going shadow. I'm going shadow because I was told that's the skill to level in, and I'm not yet sixty, so. Maybe when I make 60, I'll make some sort of paragon shift. Maybe I'll even go holy because warriors are just so F and OP right now. And mm. they will always no be. They will them. never, they will it, never change. Yeah. That, yeah. And mm. rogues are really strong too. And then occasional hunter was surprising in raids, but mm -hmm. I, I guess the golden goose is the mage still. God bless mages. They're so strong. Yeah, uh, I was a level sixty mage the other day. Did I was you? So proud of myself, dude. I think you actually have a pretty decent time against mages. Uh, yeah, as a I priest, just, I have no, I have not even. Because not only you can you just with PvP. Not only can you dispel their stuff on you or on a friend, you can dispel their stuff on them. You can remove their bubble. You can remove their frost armor. Um, their arcane intellect. They lose all their okay, buffs. I actually didn't think of that. Yeah. Holy so shit. as a priest, yeah, you I have need to rebind my dispel magic. Yeah. What you can do actually is make a macro uh, that has a mouse over macro. So when your mouse is over an enemy target, it'll dispel their stuff. When your mouse is over a friendly target or their nameplate, when you click the button, it'll dispel their benefit. Their their. All right. Yeah. It's on my there. action bar right now, so I'll need to click it, but I'll have to send it back to my one, two, three, one through ten. You'll have to mm -hmm. show me how to do that. I'm kind of uh, really dumb. Yeah. So you have to work with me. There. Yeah, I just got it working with my cleanse poison and cleanse disease macro. So now I can, oh, nice. but only that only works on friendly targets. So uh, you have to mouse over yourself in order to cleanse yourself, as opposed to holding alt and stuff. But it's uh, yeah, I think uh, retail was an unexpected surprise, and I think it's or not surprise, but success, kind of unexpected. Classic, you mean? Classic was an unexpected yeah, success. Did I say retail? I'm yeah. Sorry. No, 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 classic, classic. Yeah, I think it's um, it's one of these things that people just like. <laughs> For me, at least, playing retail, going back, and if I don't know about how you felt about in Cataclysm, if you played into Warlords of Draenor at all, but like the game felt more and more like a slot machine, and more and more less and less like you have control over what you're able to do. And the more yeah, I play I classic, the more in control I feel of my character and the way I play it. Yeah, I saw you the other day, like just I. <laughs> 
I knew you were in it when you were like just spending time looking for gear. I'm like, oh boy, he's at that level. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh crap. Yeah. But you, not only that, yeah, not only that. that. You're like, yeah. Actually, it reminds me of Hearthstone a lot. Um, when I play Hearthstone, you can pilot a deck, which means you can go online, copy paste the deck, and then pilot it. How good are you piloting? But, mm -hmm. Or, you know, you kind of got to fight the meta. And I guess the meta is pretty much stale in game classic. Mm -hmm. It's pretty stale meta, I suppose. But, yeah, going back and trying to create your own little birth or like you're getting your own little baby out there. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. You're making your mark on the world. It's it's cool. And then what I love is like, okay, so I'm in PvP wise, not even PvE wise. Because PvE, I feel like, is pretty self set and go, uh, dry. I don't think there's really anything else you can do to make yourself better in PvE uh, relative to what they've said. But PvP wise, when you're fighting a rogue, you need armor. Or you need something to stop them. So I throw on a shield. I throw on a dagger. And then i am got my shield up and I'm blocking their attacks. Hopefully I block something big. Like a maybe I block a big gouge so he can't, you know, uh, CC me for a while. Maybe I block something good. I don't know. I just got that shield up for that chance. I got that big armor spike because he does a lot of physical damage. Same thing against warriors. I got a shield on. Because I know I'm not going to be able to burst this guy down with a wind fury proc. Um, and like, not only that. I could, if I knew I was going to face a rogue, if I knew I was going to face a warrior beforehand, I could change my whole gear set in order when to, we get, uh, you know what I mean? When do we get battle, like 2v2s and 3v3s? Is that no, a thing that's, classic? No, that's only Burning Crusade. Oh, yeah. That was so much fun. We haven't even got Battlegrounds yet. Battle, that's true. Battlegrounds are in We're uh, getting Dire Maul next, I guess. I Like, mm -hmm. if they can take it slow. Just take it slow. I don't care. I'm still riding this roller coaster. I'm still on it, you know? I'm like, not begging for any more content or, you know, because at some point it's just pipelining and now we're back in retail. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I mean, at some point we're done. Like the, they have everything in classic that they can have. And then you have to ask, okay, well, what, what goes next? Um, I, yeah, I think the longer they take, the better because I'm enjoying it. I'm not burnt out. I'm good. Whatever you guys want to do, keep keep it up. It's fine. But apparently, I, I, there must be people that are being burned out right now because they're about to bring Dire Maul in. And they're like, oh, they need to get these guys more content. Get them more stuff to do. Quick, put it out. Do you think it was smart to release Dire Maul early? Um, would you, if, if you were Blizzard BDP, would you drop, would you drop Dire Maul early? I think they have numbers that we don't that would suggest that they need to release it early. I'm just going to go with them on this one. That they, and, you know, But I also think that it doesn't really matter either way because uh, Dire Maul is just one instance. It's got a bunch of good gear in it, but it's not like things aren't like completely it's different. It's enough, I guess. Yeah. Some, cook, some crumbs. Mm -hmm. I think no, I don't mind Dire Maul getting released early. It's kind of neat. It's too much. It's still like kind of too much for me at this point because I'm yeah. not level 60 yet. I think they're... I, the only people that are... Oh, dude, it's so hard to find warriors that are not level 60. <laughs> really? Like, like now's that... the time to level warrior and just run to the top. I'll get some tanks. You could be the tanker. I, I think I'm gonna level my druid next and just tank on stuff. But then I gotta. I, I need to, to find a warrior that. name. I've been looking for a warrior name for my undead female. So call call Anthony at call Jamin at. <laughs> uh, I think it's nine four nine. What is it? Hold on, I gotta pull it up. My phone oh, number. Oh, supposed to be right for this. Yeah, I'm supposed to have that known, man. I'm supposed to have that. And I I need call in with good undead female warrior names. We need them. Uh, 949 If you guys have an undead female warrior name, 949-407-9198. I'll tip you in-game. <laughs> With uh, a cheers. Yeah. I'm cl Oh, dude. Enchanting is the worst. Enchanting I is? I have to go to Uldamon. Yeah. yeah. I'm stuck at two and a quarter. Stuck at two and a quarter. I ain't mad because I feel like once I get enchanting, I've seen trade chat and oh boy, is it expensive to get your stuff enchanted. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of mats. And then most people, what you can do, and I do this, I don't know if other people do this, but I just buy my mats and I go find an enchanter and I say, hey, I need this. And they go, okay. And they just stand in, they can literally stand in Orgrimmar and just people walk up to them and give them things. Please, please, sir. Please, I need some, I need a crusader enchant on my weapon, please. And he was like, mm. yeah, that actually reminds me of what Rob okay. when, Rob actually played WoW, and I remember him. He was kind of like the first person I knew that would sit in org and just yell, hey, like, uh, business is open, you know? 
And I was mm-hmm. like, man, this is actually pretty smart. Yeah. I liked, uh, that's what I like about our group, man. It's just a lot of different things to learn from a lot of different people. Uh, I don't know what that, I don't, I don't know what I'd do without you guys. I don't know how <laughs> life would be. It'd be, it'd be crappy. It's the social, yeah, we're working on a social experience, man. And like every day I meet someone new that I, that teaches me something I didn't know about the game. Just little things here and there. I'm like, wait, what is that? How does that work? Oh, and like I thought, you know, people in our group, you're like, oh, the, you're that you love classic WoW. Like, t- tell me more about this. And I'm like, all right, let me go Google this real quick. I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> like, yeah, it reminds me of uh, my, I had a vocal teacher and he was like, I can't, tell you how i can't give you these epiphanies but i'll know when you've had the epiphany i was like oh because i've he's like because i've had them you know it sounds lazy to I me mean, sound like a lazy teacher i was like figure it out <laughs> he's like, I, don't, I don't know you can't, you can't <laughs> he's like epiphany. he's like i don't know how to teach you this i don't know how to teach anyone yeah, anything yeah. really yeah there's <laughs> things you gotta do for yourself there's, yeah. <laughs> well, there are things you gotta do for yourself otherwise there's no meaning there's you don't learn it this remind you know what it reminds me of? Mm-hmm. Hey, Jamin, go here. Okay, now go here. You turn Questy off, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I, do. I don't have Questy. Kind of like that. You gotta, you gotta have to do it for yourself. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you're not gonna understand what the heck's going on. Yeah, I, exactly. Yeah, people, we level up, and then you go, "What was that? What we just do?" And you go, "Don't you realize the significance of that?" Like, there's yeah. a whole quest with Thrall in this game that thrall yells at you and says like tells you you're like a young child basically and like he doesn't yell at you but he he calls you like immature and like i don't know if anybody he realizes you, this like, you. yeah i like that like read it when i was reading that i was like wait a second thrall's a jerk like he's not the like lovable green jesus that everyone paints him to be in like world of warcraft mm-hmm. classic like he's kind of like i'm a freaking war chief bro like you don't know anything like are you so dumb god like he's uh Thrall's awesome. Like, I, it makes me like him more. I'm like, he's, disrespect me, daddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I don't know. Like, he's not just like a, a a blank canvas of like good. Like, he's just a good. Oh yeah, well, I'm Thrall, and I do everything. Morally ambiguous. Yeah, morally good. Always making the right choice. Always yes. Like, it was uh, it was good to to read these these stuff. And if I was using Questy, I'd just be like, click, 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 click. Go, go, go. Next quest. What's we're, what's the what's the plan? Yeah, it, it kind of, that kind of actually reminds me of like the developers all playing it and like they're terrible at the game. Like, dude, you created the game. <laughs> so it doesn't mean they're good at it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're like, I wrote this. <laughs> or like, well, then read it. Well, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, so you also do Twitch Sings uh, for anyone. You don't stream, but you do participate in duets and you have videos on your Twitch page, which is uh, right. T-, T. McCauley. Is that how you? That's right. T M C C A U L E Y. Okay. How's Twitch Sings going? Is I know you've gotten a little bit of a pop filter, uh pop filter fetish going on for your for your friends. Yes, I'm not doing it right now, but I have to hold my pop filter and uh they're like whenever I sing with people, they're like, There's the guy holding his pop filter and it never occurred to me that would be like a thing. But I guess everyone else has all their pop filters like so a pop filter is just like basically pantyhose or like a mesh a cloth mesh over top of your mic so that it reduces your yeah your pops your airflow it stops the it stops the airflow so that's not as intrusive but everyone's like got it built in or it's just they call them also windscreens windscreens you can put it over but i just hold mine and i have gotten uh i've gotten a lot of followers it's kind of fun i used to I'm not used to i still do like go check out a twitch stream so on twitch sings people will go live and they'll be like all right, who wants to sing with me now? And you got to have like some duets already in your stockpile. And mm. maybe your number, it's like a lottery. Your number comes up and it's like, I'm going to sing with him now. And it's like, oh, that's a lot. of fun. And then, so you get a lot of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Promotion, FaceTime, like a lot of. No, networking uh, kind of stuff. Exposure, exposure, exposure. exposure. Okay. Yeah, you get a lot of exposure really quick because you're kind of hijacking other people's streams at least for like three minutes, you know? Mm-hmm. It's really cool. Um, I'm decently good at singing. Got a lot to go. I hate my singing, obviously. Every artist hates their own work. But, uh, man, is it fun. I get... There's little pleasure... 
little more pleasure than I get than singing. That was worded weirdly, but yeah, I love singing. I love singing. Yeah, you're good at it, man. I, 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 it's fun to watch you. It's also really fun just to watch someone doing something they love. And, uh, yeah, that is fun too. Actually. You're like, Hey man, and just giving it, my dad was always like, don't half ass something. So I full ass it. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I'll full, ass it. I'll full ass this. Like whatever you do, just don't half ass it. Um, and I've kind of taken that to heart. Like if I'm going to do something like kind of cooking. I love cooking too. get ready for some s- delicious meals. It's going to be fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love cooking and I love singing. It's like, and I love playing classic wow. That's me in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. Cooking, dude. I can't wait. We're going to have some great gamer meals. We can get some good gamer fuel because my gamer fuel yep. at the moment can mist, can, is mostly consists peanut butter. Consists of, yeah, peanut butter and jelly and coffee. That's about everything I drink and eat. So remember how I said I like uh, earlier we were talking about I only, <laughs> <He's upgraded. laughs> I only eat ramen and yuho. I'm now on to peanut butter and jelly and coffee. And then otherwise I have to go out and buy my own food. Like I have to go to like a restaurant or like order food off like. Yeah. I actually delivery. also have I got one of those um environmentally friendly bags whatever just a bag that it's, like you don't have to bag my stuff because it's I brought my own bag mm. which is cool so I love going to the grocer uh this hair they, we have a hair studio here and they have like amazing produce and it's really fun to walk through the produce and look at how look at things and be like hey you know that bok choy or that rutabaga or turnip looks really good I think I might try to do something with that it's a lot of fun Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of shape it can shape your just going to the grocery real quick and and it's 24 7 oh it's 24 <laughs> 7 oh the, so we i mean we play video games video games are amazing but like again like balancing your life and like uh yeah i agree yeah. eating eating good food taking care of your body that's all like not logging in not logging in for just a freaking minute mm-hmm. or something yeah you don't have to your brain. yeah you don't have to jump on as soon as you get home like kind of thing like i i have wake finding, up yeah, or as soon as you wake up. Yeah, which is what I, I used to do. Now on days I'm like, yeah. oh, I got to do the podcast. I got actual stuff to do in my life. I got like responsibilities. I yeah, got- and you know what? I, yeah. well, that comes full circle to the queue times. Mm-hmm. I lo- I loved having a queue time because I can be like, hey, I logged in, but boy, you got three hours before you can play. And it was <laughs> like this own personal like parental control on myself, and it was really <laughs> nice. <laughs> Now you can log in whenever, and you're like, "Oh, oh, now dear." Now I can log in whenever, and it's kind yeah. of, it actually has gone downhill a bit. But uh, I, I, I remember I'm like, "Hey, hey, hey," and like, "Dude, do your I'm not, not chores, but like, go out and be you. Don't forget who you are, and then mm-hmm. come back and let's go hard." Yeah, because it's still just, fun. It's just, there's a healthy way to enjoy it. it. To yeah, you can definitely play. But and actually, when you play, when you do play after you're doing your chores and stuff you're much more focused and concentrated and you get a lot more out of the experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like I sitting around that. Orgamar creating a train or something. <laughs> no, I've noticed that like I, I'll get on, I'll get home and I'll be like, let me go sit down. I don't, I need to do something, but let me go just sit down and like, maybe I'll, I'll just log, maybe I'll just like go to the, and maybe I'll just, and like and the whole time I'm constantly like, no, no, no. Like I, I, I don't have time to play right now. So like, why am I even on? And then you have to like, so you, even the time I am on, even though I know I'm not supposed to, I shouldn't be on, I should be doing something else. There's other stuff I got to do. Um, and it's not fruitful or yeah, like, it's a wasted time, but it's, it's, yeah, it's both wasted. Time. It's yeah, both exactly. wasted in the video game and it's wasted in the real life because I know both times are being wait. Like I, I shouldn't be doing this. So I'm yeah. just giving myself an excuse to check it out or like put my toe in, but I'm not actually jumping full head into the water and I'm still trying to like keep active on the other side of other things that I'm doing. A hundred percent. That's pretty, that's an important lesson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's good. I mean, it's still, it's still a, a great game and I'm, I'm excited for it uh, for going oh, forward. God, yes. I can't wait for Battlegrounds uh, because I feel like that's when my... I'm terrible at PvP right now, even though I'm like Shadow, the uh, yeah. Mage and Shadow. Are in, oh my God, learning, Shadow. learning how to fight people? Dude, dueling people for the, like I was really worried about dueling people at the beginning of the like a couple days. It was like it was like a day or two ago. I was just like people were like dueling me, and I was like, oh, I don't know because I I'm not very good at dueling, and I don't really know if if I'm gonna be able to duel you. Uh, and Insert then, Winfrey proc. Yeah. Insert Winfrey proc. Right, and then like I started dueling people, and I was like, oh, I can actually like I can actually win these fights. Like I don't have like 
best in slack gear right now. I don't know who these people are. There's no like matchmaking system putting us together, but I'm actually winning some of these fights and they're winning some of these fights. And like, yes, yeah, it might come down to like RNG. Your teeth in a bit, like, but yeah, oh. like, oh, I might actually have a you chance gave here. A little bit there. You yeah. see that? Like, you I see actually that? beat a warrior in, in a duel. And I was like, yeah, that goes back to my level. <laughs> uh, I beat a level 60 mage. He was an Ungoro crater. I'm level 54 Shadow Priest. And he had already killed me, destroyed me, made a laughing stock of me. But I saw him trying to farm a devil sword, which I didn't know what devil swords were until I saw one. I saw the devil sword first. It was a tyrant devil sword. It's a level like 54 elite in Angora Crater. Apparently, you skin it for his devil sword hides. Right? Mm -hmm. right. Okay. When he was trying to take it down, and I saw him, and I hit him with a mind blast that hit for two under a thousand, and it deleted him. And I was like, <laughs> I let out an audible like, yeah! <laughs> you know, I was like tapping my thing. I was like, ah! Feel that pain. But he found like a level 60 rogue later that deleted me and I was kind of angry. But uh, it was so much fun. I was like, oh, wow. They do take damage. They're not invincible. They do bleed. People do bleed. Oh, yeah. I can do this. <laughs> yeah, and and actually in this game versus, I don't know if you remember in, in uh, Cataclysm and... and retail the way it is now a level like oh. level like 50 hitting a level 60 or hitting a, like a max level character uh you don't do anything like you if you're not max level you don't do anything against max level characters but in this game even though you're only like six levels below him uh yeah it, and i guess i'm happy that it yeah. connected in my when it did it to crit him for 998 i was like oh yeah in my brain i'm like oh i don't have a chance here but i've noticed a lot of times I, you actually have a pretty good chance against these 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 level 60 players if you're level yeah, 55 I'll, 56 as you i'll find myself closer. not using fear i'll find myself not using fear because i'm like it'll just be resisted it'll just be resisted i'm like oh wait this actually works mm -hmm. you need to be using fear you dummy mm -hmm. yeah it's really good um man classic miles been great video games fantastic um are there any you're looking forward to right now is there any on the horizon that you've even noticed that oh are... yeah let's go bro you yeah. ready for the meme are you are, yeah let's hear it cyberpunk oh god we just end the interview what's, where what's is the... this where's the end the interview <laughs> button cyberpunk 2077 you think so you think that's that the, you think that's it's the number you think that's the number you think it's gonna be hyped up as or as good as the hype Everybody seems to want that. That's like the only game anybody knows about, though, I guess. Really. I don't know if it's hype for that game as much as that's the only game that's I been announced right. I think for it's the like future. The, it's the only game that I know that's kind of coming out, yeah. other than like some indie guys that are pushing their products on Imager or something. Mm -hmm. I, um, I, saw, I saw a meme. It, uh, have you seen uh, The Boys? Yeah. I don't know. So, or, so, like, so for anyone out there no listening, spoiler, no, spoilers. no spoilers. Okay. Well, the boys is a, yeah. is a Amazon show. Superheroes. Go ahead. Yeah. It, the boys is amazing. It, totally good. Watch. Um, amazing. Anyways, he's walking around the table. He's like, you guys have been doing really crappy. It's like, you know, it, like, this is like episode two. He's like, you guys are doing really crappy. And he points at people and it's like EA. And he points at another <laughs> person. It's blizzard. And he was like, but, you know what, Black Noir? You're doing all right. And it was like CD Project Red or something. <laughs> I, don't even, <laughs> I don't even know what they're doing right now. Yeah, they're doing... Uh, yeah, they're doing... Oh, they're doing the Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk, yeah. Cyberpunk. Well, see how much I know? Yeah, so we get... P dummies like me get information from memes, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Cyberpunk, I think, is going to be pretty good. I think as far as like the single player people are concerned like the big mm -hmm. like the D, D type folk yeah it's gonna be sweet i always kind of wish i was had the well we did we could have done D, &D but maybe mm -hmm. I, I think D, D would be fun yeah i think so too i think D, i've played it a couple times but i've never actually like dove into it like i've had like i've, I've yeah, and there's a bit like, of a meta with it too yeah. like you got to know how to play the game just a bit to make it fun but after that you yeah. Just go. And it's also right. being with people that are all like your same like level of like involvement, like people intelligence. who intelligence. <laughs> not intelligence, but like people who have played the game already. Like you don't want to have like 
you know, like the same thing we're talking about, like learning the game right now. Like you don't want to play with some guy who's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I know how to play. Just, just, just follow my commands, and you're and like, you lose the enjoyment of the exploration of the game. Oh right. When there's yeah. someone just telling you, it's like questy, like just telling you where to go, just telling you how right, to play. So the guy who knows plays the DM, yeah. basically, and then he can hide behind that just a bit. Yeah. And, that's what, yeah. and also having a good I DM, love- having a good creative person. Uh, my. F- Right, yeah. Sounds yeah, good. Yeah, I agreed. My favorite memes to look at are D and D memes, like the Bard and the Rogue, whatever. Like those are great. Yeah, I I I've played D and D just a few times, and like the the one time was in in a different college. I played with this group. We got and... Kingdom Death here. Oh, I have Dude, King, I have Kingdom Death as Kingdom well. Death, or is that just another story? That's a game. No, we can talk about Kingdom Death because that's a that's a hell of a game. Uh, it's a hell of a game. Yeah, it's a board game. Uh, so not a video game. But it's a, death. it's a board game uh, that it's like the DM is the game. Like you don't need a DM. You have a game that does it for you. Uh, and there's right. tons of expansions for it. And uh, man, it costs a lot of money. I don't know. I, 200. I, have, I think it retails four. Yeah. I've played, I have mine. I put together the initial survivors. I feel proud of introducing this group to the kingdom death. I don't know what made me think it was going to be good. I just kind of got lucky, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's a lot of fun. You can paint your minis. Um, there's a lot of like, there's there's they even have like pinup minis that you can just buy. Mm-hmm. They're a lot of fun. You can just play it, use them. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I have a ton of. I in fact that I'm glad I haven't put that together yet because like just transporting that because I'm for Do anyone. You have that? Yeah, I have the whole box. I have every. I, I have that too. I have three expansion sets. I'm looking at right now. Oh my! Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, I got the Lion King, the Spider okay, Cleese. We're gonna play that. Uh, That's gonna be a Twitch stream. And the Dung Beetle Knight. Yeah. That's going to be a Twitch stream. Yeah, we're going to have to I set up a camera. Video. We're going to set up camera, multiple camera system, yeah. lines. Yeah, get people over here. Three cameras. Yeah, that sounds good, man. So basically, you uh, in this game, Kingdom Death, you start out with like four people, and then you can procreate and create a village. Mm-hmm. And like sometimes your vill- you might send this one person out. It's a lot of bookkeeping, a lot of bookkeeping, mm-hmm. but that's – D and D, so you can send these villagers out. And um, who's our famous guy? He lost like his leg. His name was Legless, or... I think, or something. Did we name him? I think we named. I don't think we named him until after the first yeah. fight. Like yeah. you, you don't you name to... you don't name them until Always after the first new character yeah. sheets. But it's not that terrible. But yeah, yeah, we had this one guy that would just he, he... got massacred. Right? He lost like, both his arms able... or both his legs or all of them. I want to say he lost his arms, but I really don't know. I don't remember. Navid would. Naveed would know. Yeah, he had a uh, either he was missing a bunch of limbs, m- multiple limbs of we different varieties. The, the specifics don't matter. Mm-hmm. He lost them. Yeah, <laughs> he lost them. Right, and we he was might like, have like touched. It. Remember, dude, there's a statue you can touch, and the statue like becomes that person, and you're like, oh, uh, what happened to the other guy? And he was like, it doesn't matter now. <laughs> I am that person. You're like. Oh yeah, and he oh just joins your he just joins your group. Yeah. That's Yeah, he that, just joins your group. And you're like, yeah. oh my god. And you what don't, just happened? You don't even get to question it. You're just like, okay, now we lost whoever we had and we have this new guy on our great team that has completely different stats and whatever he has. Like yeah. it's just ridiculous. The game is so like cutthroat and like dark and No no tell him about tell him about our guy with no arms. What do um, we assign him to? Yeah, right. So he's he's got no arms, no legs. So obviously he's not gonna be a fighter, right? We have a village. We're supposed to maintain the village. We're supposed to make this village as strong as it possibly can be. So what can we do with a man who has no arms or legs? What can, what is he good for in a village? He's, Call in to 919. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, his, he's good for procreation, okay? Procreation. His, his groin still works, okay? His we arms him don't. To the house. His legs don't. But, you know, okay, so in, in this game, procreation is dangerous, okay? There is a chance you will die during it. There is a small, small chance you will die. I mean, I guess there's a small chance you'll die to it in real life. But it will in, in everything. Yeah. In every, everything in this game. You could roll, roll a one. Yeah, you roll screwed. a one, you're messed up. Yeah, so we, yeah. Sent, we sent Armless, we sent Limless, whatever his name was, to the procreation Legless. house. Legless? <laughs> Legless. 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 His name was Legless, yeah. <laughs> Uh, we sent him to the procreation house, uh, and he procreated. <laughs> he, AKA whorehouse. Yeah, he procreated. Uh, that man uh, deserves he, a, he did a great job. He deserves a medal. He must have fathered five or six kids. Yeah. Uh, but the, at one point, uh, he came, his, his life came to an end. His life came to a finale. It came to a, a final peak. He, he like, 
We rolled a certain number. He became self-aware. Mm-hmm. Like the character became self-aware. Mm-hmm. He fell in love with this person. Yep. And uh, they they held hands and they just walked out into the abyss. Right. And that was the last we. Saw. Wait, he can't walk. He's legless. Yeah. She must have carried him. Yeah. Yeah. In the she book, carried, in the book, it tells him. it tells you what happens. It says the two lovers fall yeah. in love and they walk off. They leave your village forever. And they walk off yeah, and held hands. Yeah, and that's another cool thing about the book. Like, you don't look through the book unless it tells you to. And that's something I've never experienced before. Like, do not open to this page unless we tell you to. Right. You don't want to. You don't want to read everything in the book beforehand because then you'll know every possible outcome that could ever happen in every exp- roll. Because you roll to see like what happens. You go, okay, what happens this year? And you roll it, and it it goes over and it shows you, you know. Okay, this time you 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 there's a, a set of stone faces, and the stone faces have you can go inside them if you want, but you have to roll and you say roll as many dice as you want, uh, and if you roll <laughs> yeah. if you roll go eat, ahead, bro. If, if you break a hundred with all your sum total, you get something, but if you roll any doubles, something bad will happen, and so you get to roll as many dice as you want. You get to choose. Oh, how many dice can I roll? How many dice do I roll? Without rolling And, like, of course, there's probably a mathematician in some group that was like, well, the perfect number would be to roll this number. But, like, as a... Uh, in, in the, it's dice, bro. Yeah. In the middle in the middle of the game, you're just like, I don't, well, well, how much do I need to get 100? Well, you need at least... What was it? Yeah, you need at least five, start right? Gaining stats. Each yeah. of these people gain, start gaining stats, and you're like, I do not want to lose this guy. Yeah. Either like, oh, well, I might need five dice because that's at least a hundred. I have to roll twenties on every every one, and then I get a, I'll, I'll, we'll get it. But no, we need more. Yeah, moment of the, silence for legless. Yeah. Legless. The chance of that happening is so low. So maybe we roll ten dice. Ten dice. We roll ten dice. Okay. Then we'll break a hundred for sure, right? Because we only need to roll tens, but we can't roll any doubles. Well, hmm. ten dice. The most you're gonna get is sixty. No, 10 times 20. Because they're 20 sided die. Oh, shit. I was doing six sided. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I don't know. But anyway, so there's, I'm sure there's a mathematician yeah, out here that could tell you. But in the heat of the moment, when you have to make this yeah. decision, yeah. when you didn't know it was coming, <laughs> you didn't know you were going to have to make this decision. You're just like, I don't. How many dice do I roll? I don't know. And you're like consulting your, your group of people that are around the table with you. That's a really good time. So Kingdom Death, yeah, it's- Monster Hunter, right? That's the game. It, there's phases in the game. You. Uh, there's upkeep. You are in the village. It's kind of an RTS on a board game. There's three phases: mm-hmm. like upkeep. You uh, go on the hunt for this creature, which is kind of yeah, which is like the then, which is like the main part of the game. Really, is the fighting oh, of the yeah, monsters. Like events. You read events, and you're like, oh, you're lost in the tall grass. Yeah, you get turned around, go back. Yeah, the, like, or like not one guy, one anything. guy has disease now. He'll have be diseased during the beginning yeah, of the he, fight. He touched the stone or whatever. Mm-hmm. There's always a like chart you roll on yeah because i know you roll doubles on that stone face one you you your character walked into the stone face and you rolled doubles and it says the stone face closes on your character he's gone forever and you're like oh, what the fuck yeah that was actually <laughs> the best thing that could happen i think because that guy was op that stone creature was op wasn't was he like, no he had some skills and stuff with him i don't remember i remember i remember uh there was this guy called uh i don't know what he's called but he had this like two-handed machete he was like dual wielding machetes he had this giant fur coat on him and um the, the butcher right skill. yeah it was ashley it was either ashley or like an ex-girlfriend at the time that had rolled this and she was just getting pummeled right she was getting like imagine in your last dying moments like the sky's on top and you on top of you just dual wielding machetes into your face and her lungs fill up with blood and there's like this skill that you can learn if you roll like a perfect you gain this moment of clarity and you 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 like learn these blood lungs and you just become you just beat his ass and it's like (laughs) oh like moments like those is huge yeah yeah it's incredible it's a great game for that yeah and it's it's literally D &D without ever having to have a uh, a dungeon master because the game plays itself it's uh it's pretty great i'm trying to think of other get your your pen and paper out yeah And that's other board fun. games, Werewolf has been great. We can play more Werewolf. Once, oh, that's once right. Yeah, Werewolf. Uh, we had a lot of fun with that. Yeah, Werewolf Monster. Uh, it's another board game with a. With, you get cards and you get tell. You get told what role you are. and It's a hidden role game. Um, yeah, it's like mole type of stuff, but mm-hmm. it, it's like a social mole. There's a mole in there. There's a couple of werewolves, but we don't know who they are. Trying to hide themselves, trying to kill people without them knowing. 
Yeah, video games and games in general have just been fantastic. And uh, uh, I don't know. They've been a great social tool, for sure. Yeah, so to see when people say, like, you know, like the whole, like, oh, they, they cause violence. violence. Dude, there's memes yeah. for that. It's like, uh, <laughs> and dude, there was another one. It was, like, the creator of Monkey Ball, and he was the same creator for, like, Yakuza. And the memes were, like, one causes infinite amount of frustration, and the other one is Yakuza. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, Monkey Ball was, like, trying to trigger people so much more than the game called Yakuza or something. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, they, I mean, like... Uh, people, I see it as an outlet, uh, if anything, for some people. But, you know, I think mental health and, like, people talk about gun control. People talk about, uh, and I don't mean to get political, but, uh, like, mental health is just the thing that needs to be talked about more. Like, it's just such a simple thing. Like, it's so simple. Mental health is so, like, just just take care of your brain. Just take care of it. Like, just talk, let's talk about, like, the fact that people don't understand how to cope with yeah, problems. Yeah, people don't see it as disease. People yeah. don't see it as a disease. They see it as a shameful thing. Like, oh, I need help thinking. Yeah, like, I need help using my brain. Yeah, you do. That's like why we're like we're not that smart. Like we're humans. Like we pretend. Yeah, like, you know, yeah, we're like, pretend- you need help using your brain. Like, imagine the guy that can't run yeah. versus the guy that can run. And what are you gonna tell him? Like, all you can say is just use your freaking legs better, you dummy. Yeah. How can you not do this? And uh, that's terrible. That's, goes back to me screaming at the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's different. But I was like, no, it's the same. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, to ha- yeah, not not knowing like, how to communicate exactly how to what you want and being able to understand what you need or want in your brain and like why you're like going insane, like and not having an outlet, not having coping mechanisms, like that's all. Yeah, just... life gets a little more complicated as the years go on. Yeah, especially and, with all these exterior sources or whatever. Like it, it gets complicated. Yeah, and like I don't know. Is again, it's not something to take light either. Yeah, yeah, like what we we said that people don't know how to deal with like what they're going through, and people think it's like a shameful thing to not understand how to be alive. But like, Damn boomers. like what I'm trying to say is that like we're not that much better than I don't know dolphins or, worse. or like dogs. Or worse. Like, like people think we're like well we're humans, so we're a higher intelligence. No, we're not. We're, we're we have pretty basic instincts and things that we need and want and desire and understanding how to well, do that dogs along can't houses. That's, well, I mean, they have do- how, well. How do they get dog houses then? Ex- <laughs> we did that. Explain, <laughs> explain, <laughs> explain. All right. Where do dog houses come from? Though? On this episode of Jama Cat, <laughs> we need to learn how to build a dog house. Yeah, using the dog. Yeah, the dogs they build them. Obviously, that's how they get there. I don't know where you think they dog houses burrow. come from. Like, use caves or something. But <laughs> all right. Dealing with the dealing with the amount of intelligence we have can be mm-hmm. difficult, yeah. Or the amount of intelligence we don't have, right, can be difficult because everyone is so much different. Everyone's at so many different levels. Mm-hmm. And seeing, looking at someone and looking at their face doesn't tell you anything about them about where they are mentally. I mean, it does usually. You can learn a little bit about that, but you don't actually know. You don't. You can't tell what's happening inside somebody when you just they just no, walking no, through no. a crowd. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it can be hard to find common ground. Or it can be easy. Just got to know what to do. Mm-hmm. And video games. Hey, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, the, that's the uh, common uh, ground. Jump right and cast. Jump and cast. All right, man. That's it. That's the whole interview. Thanks for coming on. I don't have anything else to ask of you. If there's anything you want to talk about still. No, I think we... We, I think we did it. Yeah, we did it. It was success. Nailed it. The so goal. at the end of my Twitch sings, I always say nailed it. I'm like nailed it. Nailed Even it. Even if it if it's ironic or if it's not, it just works. <laughs> well, I think we nailed na- it. I think we nailed it. Yeah. Right. Beautiful. Beautiful. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. I want to thank Ace for being here and joining me. You're truly a great friend, and I really enjoyed having you on. And that's everything I have for you right now. I hope you stick around, because there's always stuff coming down the pipe. Every Saturday is a new episode. Have a great night, have a great life, and have a great morning.